So, first thing, let me have you introduce yourself. My name is Mike Reich, and I am the founder of Dark Labyrinth Entertainment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does Dark Labyrinth Entertainment do? Um, we create 3D audio sensory experiences, which sounds like a mouthful of nothing because no one's ever done it before. Um, we've been doing it for three and a half years now. It's our seventh project. Okay. But it's the first time we're putting it in a trailer, so we can bring it anywhere. Um, it's basically like bringing a Disney ride to a private party. It's pretty awesome. Okay. <laughs> so what inspired you to, uh, to work on these projects? Oh, wow. That tunnel goes deep. Um, a lot of things inspired me. When I was very young, I got into haunted houses, uh, like fifth, sixth grade. Um, I think Haunted Catacombs was my first haunted house, and I just loved the experience so much that I decided that I wanted to get into the art of creating such interactive experiences. And I was kind of in the haunted house industry for a while, which I'm still associated with. Um, but when I went to college, I discovered this um, 3D sound technique uh, called the virtual haircut on YouTube. So if you look up virtual haircut and you put on a pair of headphones, there's this guy that explains 3D audio to you and in a Mexican accent and gives you a haircut and you like hear him cutting the scissors around your head and he like puts a bag over your head and I don't know why but <laughs> you get to hear it um, and it's just it's really really cool to to like hear I don't usually think about like being in a space in the way that it sounds you always think about the way a space looks or maybe even feel sometimes, but you don't really think about how it sounds unless you're in a choir or something. <laughs> yes. um, so I just was like applying that 3D sound technique to the haunted house realm and brought those two ideas together and created this masterpiece behind me. Yeah, that's that's the most of the journey, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, so this masterpiece behind you, what do you call this technically? Uh, the thing of many names. Um, well, the... What do I call it? Well, this particular project is called Shadowscape. Um, we've had many projects in the past. Our first one was Project Z, where you go down an elevator to save the world from zombies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you have Bust of Buffoon, which was like circus -y. Uh, this evil clown thing was creating fear and putting them into toys and whatever. Um, so what we have here with Shadowscape is we have a, an oracle that like tells you what your fears are and then kind of like makes them manifest into the room. Very much inspired by one of my favorite movies, Jumanji. <laughs> Freaking love that movie. Um, Robin Williams. Rest in peace. Uh, but yeah, so like the oracle just kind of brings up this this fear and then the lights go out and you get to hear and feel that particular fear manifest into the room with you. And it's a very surreal experience, which is why people seem to enjoy it because it's unlike anything else out there in terms of theatrical entertainment. Awesome. So what are your plans with this? Well, my plans are to open it up to the world um, because it's on wheels so I can bring it anywhere. Um, I'd like to, you know, people have asked me about birthday parties and weddings. Um, I'd love to get into the, you know, artist kind of niche and go to shows because it's really, it's an art installation. I mean, it's an experiential like art piece, you know, you go to a gallery, but this one's just more immersive than staring at beautiful sculptures or whatnot. Okay. Um, is there anybody that's doing something similar? Um, I'd say the first thing someone would think of if they were to think of something similar would be escape rooms. 
which is still quite a bit different than what we're doing. Um, the, the similarities are that you're kind of with a small group in a small room and it, it's kind of interactive, um, setting the scene, you're just immersed in this storyline of whatever and you have to escape. So in that sense, it has some parallels, but what makes our thing kind of different than what's going on there is ours is not so much about solving puzzles and you know being immersed in this environment it's about using your imagination to create this environment by removing the sense of sight since we rely so heavily on seeing um, like I think it's at least 80% if not more of the information that we receive on a daily basis is through our sense of sight we remove the sense of sight and suddenly you're you're forced to pay attention to the rest of your senses, which is where this becomes mm, surreal, because you're like, well, I can't see anything, so there goes 80% of the information I get all the time. Right. And now I'm like, I can feel the hair standing up on the back of my neck, I can feel the sweat dripping down, I can like smell the leather in the seats, like, you know, the, the other senses are coming alive. By putting you in the dark. <laughs> <clears throat> that sounds fun. So you said that you've been asked about this for uh, different parties, weddings, birthday parties. Um, but where is your market demographic? What are you? What are you aiming at? Um. What would this be good for? Yeah, I mean, I'd say any kind of event that's probably thematic in nature. Um, Oh, it's time for the lights to come on. It's <laughs> alright. Um, so yeah, an event that's like thematic in nature, so the steampunk fair is something I've heard of. Um, you know, something where thrill seekers would be. I mean, I, it's, I know it's been popular at like parties um, with the demographic of like know 20 to 35 or whatever um, age group okay tell me about some of the technology that you use to make the experience happen <sighs> some of the technology yes um, the technology that runs this thing has been probably the biggest learning curve for me personally uh, we have controllers called terror tech they actually were bought out and etc cetera, etc cetera. but there's these little controllers and they basically just I can tell them when to turn things on and when to turn things off um, if you get down to it it's it's rather simple but there's just a lot of it so there's just <laughs> wires everywhere and it just tells things to turn things on and off and then the air blows and water gets everywhere and uh, there's a thing that plays a video and that's there's a lot of really cool, complicated stuff, and I have to make sure that it's 100% dark inside of there, or otherwise the sensory deprivation doesn't happen. And like, I have to program a thing to get in the way of any projections um, when we're not doing them, because projectors light have a little bit of light even if you're not showing any video. And we have this little thing that goes, I mean, like, <laughs> covers up the projector. It's silly how complicated the littlest things are. Nice. So what are the next steps? What is, uh, what's the future plan? What's your next project? Well, we've actually, after doing this for so long, I think we've landed on an experience that's kind of like a template, and we can very easily build on this. So instead of having to build up and tear down and build up and tear down and start over every time, this time we have something that is flexible and we can just interchange some of the storyline on the inside and make a totally different experience so the next steps are to create multiple experiences that'll all take place inside the same trailer and I can push button number one or button number 12 and you'll have a totally different experience um, and then after I have enough of these things, I'm going to start selling them out to other people. And, so, <laughs> and then they're going to be little pop-up trailers all over the world. <laughs> Sounds ambitious. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you.